Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard and Madison. We appreciate you checking it out. Hope everybody is doing well. Today we are continuing our N title capnography series, particularly focusing on one of the waveforms that a lot of people put out there, which is the Curier Cleft. And we're going to talk about what that is, how to understand it. For those of you new to the channel, we have a whole series on entitled capnography we've come out with. We'll link it all in this video's description. Definitely check out the introductory basics video if you are new to entitled capnography because this will not make sense unless you watch that one first, okay? Uh, also, those new to the channel, we're a medical education, medical news channel with lots of medical education content, lots of medical news content. Uh, here is our page. Uh, this is uh, our home page on our playlist. Again, you can find all of our end title uh, capnography videos in our pulmonology playlist if interested. Last shout out, then we'll get into the video. We do have a Patreon page we're trying to kind of buff up. So we'd love for you to check out the page with both free membership as well as paid membership. We post all the video outlines, uh, ad free videos, practice questions, interesting articles, updated medical news, all that kind of stuff on there. So we'll link that in the video description as well. No further ado. Quick 30 second break for introduction, then we'll dive into the video. It'll be a brief video, um, so stick around. Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's gonna be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. All right, thanks for sticking around. So, entitled capnography is something that really has uh, taken central stage in a lot of different medical specialties and clinical arenas. Uh, in our life in the intensive care unit in the emergency department, uh, this is something we think about quite frequently. So, this is a normal entitled carbon dioxide uh, capnography waveform. And this is what we talk about in that basics video. So if this is unfamiliar to you. We definitely encourage you to go check it out. There's both inhalation and exhalation on this waveform. Uh, and within the exhalatory cycle, there's four different phases, zero, one, two, three, that involve the exhalation of different uh, respiratory anatomic spaces, starting with dead space, going into mixed air, plateauing at alveolar air, and then ending at this peak, which is the actual end tidal CO2 that the monitor kicks out, you know, normally being 35 to 45. So we're talking about capnographic waveforms here, particularly one called the Cure Cleft, okay? And this is one that you see um, talked about in different uh, practice questions and practice tests, and one that is clinically relevant, although only probably if you're in certain specialties. But here are two capnographic waveforms. The one on the top here, this is normal, okay? And as we said, normal is that you start to uh, exhale and you get dead space. So this is actually the start of exhalation here, um, even when the CO2 is at zero still, because that's all dead space. Then you get mixed air, dead space and alveolar air until you plateau. And this is where it's all alveolar air. So air that came from the alveoli to get to this peak. This peak here, as we said, is the actual end tidal. All right, it's kind of what comes up on the monitor. Let's say it's 40 millimeters of mercury but 35 to 45 is normal. And you get these similar looking waveforms with each breath, right? Every one of these is a breath. This here would be an abnormal capnographic waveform. You can see the morphology is similar, but you get these little divots, these little niches. And this is what they call that curare cleft. And what it is, is this is a patient on mechanical ventilation. They're on a ventilator. And it's a patient who might be sedated or even paralyzed, depending on what's going on. And the ventilator is giving them each one of these breaths, right? The ventilator is delivering a breath, delivering a breath, delivering a breath, delivering a breath. But this is the patient trying to take a breath in beyond what the ventilator is giving them, okay? And that's why you get this divot here, because this is carbon dioxide, right? So this is exhalation. It's air leaving the patient's lungs. But then at some point, while the air is leaving the patient's lungs, the patient takes a shallow breath in. And that shallow breath in then drops the CO2 because they're starting to breathe in. But that shallow breath in isn't enough to prompt the ventilator to give them a breath. So there just keeps leaving the lungs until the ventilator gives them the next breath 
in the next respiratory cycle. So it's a slight decrease in end tidal CO2 that occurs when a patient on a ventilator is trying to take a breath in, but they're unable to prompt the ventilator to give them a breath. You know, that might be that the ventilator is set where the patient is not strong enough to overcome that initiation setting, right? To mobilize enough inspiratory pressure to take a breath. That might be because there's auto peeper breath stacking. That might be that they're not fully paralyzed. Okay, so this is important to note. If you ever have someone on mechanical ventilation and you're looking at their end tidal uh, capnographic waveforms, which you should, and you see this little divot, you need to think that this is the patient trying to take a breath in, trying to inspire, but the ventilator isn't sensing this and they're not getting that breath, okay? And it can be because they're not fully paralyzed if that is what you are doing clinically, um, although that's a whole different discussion, right? It can be because the ventilator has settings that says, okay, the patient needs to mobilize this much effort for me to give them a breath. You know, it could be that the ventilator settings need to be adjusted and lowered to allow the ventilator to give the patient a breath when they're trying to take this breath in, okay? It could be because there's auto peep, and this is a different discussion. We actually have covered auto peep on our channel before, so if you're interested in that pulmonology playlist that we hinted at, um, we didn't even plan this, it just popped in our head. Uh, we do have a bunch of mechanical ventilation lectures, uh, and one of them is on auto peep, this one here. So definitely check that out if you're interested in it, because it could be auto peep, which then affects how the ventilator senses the patient trying to take a breath in. And all these things need to be thought about and adjusted because it can lead to venti synchrony, it can lead with decrease uh, or slower liberation from the ventilator. So if you ever see this curate cleft, on an end tidal capnographic waveform, it's something not to ignore. Do note, it doesn't have to be positioned in this middle spot, right? You know, let's just draw a new one. It could be that it's here, and then in this breath, it's here, and then in this breath, it is in the middle. So it doesn't have to be in the same spot because it's just when the patient is deciding to try to take a breath in. Uh, so there doesn't have to be any symmetry here. It could be kind of anywhere within this phase. Okay, so short video today, but that is one of the common capnographic waveforms that people talk about uh, and one you should recognize for patients on mechanical ventilation so that you can troubleshoot and make sure that you're doing everything you can to optimize uh, their time on mechanical ventilation. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Check out those other videos. Check out the page. Subscribe. Hit the bell button. Check out the Patreon page. I think we said that enough times. All right. Hope everyone is having a good day. Stay well. Keep learning. We'll see you all next time.